Greetings. We pick up our shorter catechism again and we're on question 10 under the general heading of what we are to believe about God and in particular what God has done in creation. We read question 10. How did God create man? The answer the catechism gives, God created man, male and female, after his own image, in knowledge, righteousness and holiness with dominion over the creatures. Today I came across a quote from Shakespeare's Macbeth who pondered, Life's but a walking shadow, a poor player, that struts and frets his hour upon the stage, and then is heard no more, tis a tale, told by an idiot, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. What? For life to signify nothing? means life is to be utterly and completely insignificant. What? For life to be insignificant is for life to be meaningless. What? For life to be meaningless is for life to be without value and indeed without worth. Whew, this is hopeless. And this is where atheistic and secular thought takes us today. The Bible, however, rebukes and challenges this thinking, Psalm 8 says, For you, O God, have made man a little lower than the angels, and you have crowned man with glory and honour. Psalm 8 here speaks of being created by God to be specially related to him. To have received a crown of glory is to have received a tiara of dignity. In life, our significance is grounded in what the Bible says of who we are and what are we. This leads us into thinking about identity, our identity as human beings. Yet we cannot understand who or what we are by looking inside of ourselves for answers, whether that be in our thinking or indeed our feelings. For as soon as I am aware of myself as a self, then I realise I am not God and I am not in sovereign control of my own life, let alone the lives of others. I may think at times that I am sovereign, but that is to believe a lie. I am created and my birth certificate proves that. And in years to come, God willing, my gravestone will reveal that my earthly life had a beginning and indeed an end. Christian theologian R.C. Sproul wrote, My sense of creatureliness ought to drive me back to my creator or indeed up to my creator. Sproul continues, I cannot contemplate God or anything else outside of myself until I am first aware of myself and yet I cannot grasp the meaning of myself fully until I understand myself in relationship to God. To know who we are is first to ask and to know who made you and who made me? Anthropology flows out of theology. The study of mankind under the study of God. Theology, anthropology. Today, when critiquing the Western world through the Bible lens, we see that the Western world is in a moral crisis because the story of the single human race, Adam's race, has been divorced from the story of God the Bible is ignored or denied by far, far too many in our day today. We must pray that God changes and creates renewed interest in his word and in himself. Incidentally, I don't see where the Bible teaches evolution, but rather creation. Both Adam and Eve were special creative acts of God. In scripture, no links are hinted at in scripture of humans, humans being involved or brought out of the animal world. The word of God at the beginning of Genesis states that God categorically created us. Indeed, Genesis 1.26 records the triune God creating mankind. For God said, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. The triune God created man, male and female, he created them. God did not create man to be alone. Rather, the Lord graciously gifted him fellowship, not only with himself, but with a fellow human being called Eve. 
Man, of course, can mean the first human being who was male and known as Adam, the head of the human race. Man or men can also refer solely to man or men, but man-men in the right context can mean human race generally, thereby referring both to males and females. Tonight I was reading Disney's Jungle Book to my little daughter and the village that Mowgli met his girlfriend. The village was called Man Village, yet there were men and women clearly moving about. God's plan for Adam and Eve involved family life. The man and woman were to be at the centre of procreating. A marriage involving one man and one woman living with and living with another in a lifelong monogamous relationship resulting in God's command being obeyed. Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth. And so they did for Adam and Eve had many sons and daughters. Today's catechism emphasises that we are more than a person. We are a person made in God's image. And although God transcends us in being, power and glory, nonetheless, there is a very real sense that God and man are alike. Not in outward physical, visible form, but with an inward invisible resemblance. God is an intelligent, creative, moral being, and likewise, Adam and Eve and us as humans, though the original um, human beings, Adam and Eve, were uh, equipped with minds and hearts and wills to perfectly know God and to carry out what he required. The human race was originally created with an inherent righteousness, the desire and ability to do right all the time. Man's holiness was the root of his righteousness that was shining forth in his heart at the beginning of time. But sadly, with the fall, it all changed. And Genesis 3 records the details of how the, the, the human race plummeted and fell from a great height. The tragedy of disobedience on Adam and Eve's behalf caused the whole of the human race to be corrupted in body and soul. The fall, however, did not destroy humanity, but only our ability to reflect God's holiness. It was lost. We still to this day bear the mark of our creator, but every facet of what it is to be human has been spoiled by sin. But there is hope with the gospel of Jesus Christ, and this is where I hope to finish. For Christ descended from heaven to a fallen world. Through his life, death and resurrection, Jesus came to save human lives and he addressed sin and its consequences for the believer. If and when you trust in Jesus as your Saviour and Lord, that image of God which was lost at the fall and spoiled can and indeed has been restored and renewed in Christ, the perfect image of the invisible God. Let me read two scriptures in closing from Colossians and Ephesians. Um, Paul writes to the Christians. Paul says, Take off your old selves in light of what Christ has done for you. With all its practices, put on the new self which is being renewed in knowledge in the image of its creator. That's Jesus. And also put off your old self which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires. Be made new in the attitude of your minds and put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. As Christians we've been saved by Jesus from our old selves and made new in Jesus. Will we then personally, proactively get involved in gospel mission, praying for and supporting for those who take the gospel to the nations? We're to be good stewards of creation, but also the message of redemption that has saved our own souls, which speaks, indeed, of a new creation to come.